All right, so today we've got a special episode where we're kind of showing behind the scenes. We normally don't do this. We normally build things and then we reveal them in a really big way, in a real life way. But it's crazy times with everything going on with lockdowns and COVID-19. So uh, Ken's going to let us in a little bit on a special project that he's been working on with our man, Ash Thorpe. So uh, what's up, guys? Hi, Brian. <laughs> oh. What's up, dudes? What have, what, have, what have you guys been up to? I mean, we kind of know what Ken's been up to. He talks about it every day on throwing Instagram axes, and YouTube. He's throwing axes, snowmobiles. Snow, yeah, all the cool <laughs> stuff. All the cool stuff. Ash, what have, what have you been up to? Just working a lot and trying to keep busy, trying to keep focused. I've been learning a lot of new stuff. So, yeah, just trying to stay positive and just focus on the good things we have and feel blessed and keep working. So. You just omitted probably the biggest thing that you had worked on this year. Cause I guess it's probably in the past, but for all of us, it's, it's new news. So <laughs> yeah. uh, word on the street is you are involved actually, or have designed the new Batmobile. Yeah. Well, due to um, really gnarly NDAs and all that kind of stuff, I can't say specifically or give any specifics, but yes, I am definitely involved with the design creation of the, latest edition of the batmobile so so guys if you don't know ash uh designed the cosworth for us um we've been working with ash for the past couple of years putting a bunch of stuff together um ash is a bona fide car guy but has also done a bunch of other cool stuff and a lot of it in hollywood did the kazi version 2 for us you applied the livery and made all the launch stuff for us for the 2020 uh livery but in that whole time, though, you've done a bunch of other stuff, too. That's yeah, come out yeah. like a great hack, right? What else have you done? I know you had your own personal project that you did also. Yeah. I mean, I'm always being, I'm always busy. And just like the film industry, like I'm, I'm always working on either another video game or a movie. And so a lot of my work, you don't really see it until like it's gone through its span of to release. So most of the stuff that I'm working on or have been working on since we've been, um, we've, we've been working together is, it's still kind of hidden, so unfortunately, but I'm always kind of working on my own passion projects as excuses to learn and stuff. And I've been building a bunch of cars, and I got this really crazy. Um, and when you Corvette. say build cars, you're, well, like build them and, and CG. Sorry, yeah, yeah. sorry, yes, <laughs> yeah. Piece of, I'm actually designing them, but I treat it almost as if I'm really building it though, because um, that helps my mind process. Because if I if I don't treat it like that, then I don't really take responsibility for the certain ways that I like to design it. So, um, but yeah, it's, there's been a lot of stuff. The great hack was really awesome. And we, it's such an important film and we got a ton of awards for our work on that. And that was a really, um, rewarding project It's the first documentary I'd been a part of and, um, went to Sundance actually, and went was out in your, in your town. And that was really beautiful. And it's my first time at Sundance and it had such a big impact, but yeah, and I've been just des designing other cars, and I got this really crazy Corvette that I'm working on right now, and possibly um, the guys at um, Fast and Loud, Rich Rawlings and them are thinking about possibly building it. So there's just a lot of really cool stuff. So just constantly staying busy, and yeah. And there's an endless amount of possibilities the more skills you get in this realm because it's, it's so um, vast. So you can do anything inside the CGI world, so let's get into the new project right so yeah. this is something that i mean we've been talking about ken for a really long time like why don't you give us a little background on the inspiration for how this project started well part of the inspiration is just the unicorn but like i like all of us but especially me uh love the unicorn not only as a as a project that we were able to build and have uh, a lot of success with um, not only like the satisfaction of making such a cool car, um, but taking a risk and making something that had never been done before and all wheel drive performance Mustang. So the idea of doing that, but repeating it with various models of Mustangs is the basic concept. And for me, the most obvious of that was the Fox body. But, but back to the unicorn though, I, I love the style of it. Um, I love the simplicity of it. I love the V8. I especially love the original V8. Um, and not that I don't love the twin turbo, it just always, 
feels like it's trying to kill me. But, you know, even the idea of, of going back to the, just the simple rawness of the beginning of the Hunicorn, and maybe even making it more simple and raw, that was kind of the general idea that I had in my head of what I, I wanted to do. And so the Fox body came up as kind of the next obvious choice. Um, but also the 80s, like I love the 80s. And so the Fox body with the louvers and that sort of look just really means 80s to me in, in the Ford context. So then I instantly go, ooh, Miami Vice, like doing a Gymkhana in, in Miami. So an all white, like the all white Countach is kind of like my inspiration, white on white, white interior, all that stuff rolled into one. So that's what I started with, with Ash. Here's my brain dump. I want to do Miami Vice <laughs> <laughs> with a white Countach, but it's a Mustang and it's, it's basically the unicorn in all white, blah, 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 blah. It's, there's my brain dump, but we evolved all that into certain inspirations of certain uh, Fox body race car, uh, yeah. you know, that we, we had found on the internet and kind of rolled all that up into an idea. And I think Ash's response was just, hell yeah. Like I want to do that. I, I want to be a part of that. It actually synced up perfectly. Cause you were like, let's do a Fox body. And I was like, that's exactly what I was hoping you'd say, because it's a car that I feel like has all the potential to just be insane. So it, it was like, that's my favorite thing is taking something that's kind of forgotten and like re imagine it you know so not like it's forgotten but you know what i mean so so yeah. do either of you know where the name fox body came from yeah so fox it was basically just the frame designator but so the actual name for fox was inspired by something that warms my heart because it was the audi fox see the iacocca was looking at how to build a platform for ford that was more of a european based car and they looked at the Audi Fox as kind of that inspiration. And, you know, the Fox body is more than just the Mustang. It's the Mercury Capri. It's the uh, Ford Fairmont. It is the Thunderbird. There's a bunch of other cars that are built on what is known as kind of the Ford Fox body platform. Fox body, it's a code name. I mean, a lot of manufacturers use kind of secret code names. I think Fox body just sounded so cool that it was something that kind of just stayed with the car and, you know, now people really know it as Fox body. When I, when I build these things, I'll, I'll grab references from, from Ken, Ken, Ken and I usually we talk via text because we're both busy or in meetings or something. So he'll send stuff. I'll check it. I'll, I mean, we'll send stuff back and forth and I'm like, what do you think of this? And what do you think of that? And so I was just pulling random references from current existing, um, like race cars and, um, Fox bodies that are really quite interesting. Um, just like we, we really, we, there was a couple of ingredients that I think we both knew that we really needed to have. Obviously a wide body, since we're going to do the V8 with the ITBs, having that big scoop in there and roof scoop as well. And the rear uh, window le levers are, what do you call these? The louvers that we call those? Yeah, louvers. Yeah. And then like this one doesn't have it, but like the covers on the rear lights and stuff too. Just, just certain things that are like super iconic about this. And I was and also wanting to explore different like, you know, are we going to sit to use the, sta this, the stock lines and this accentuate them? Or are we going to do like bubble flares or like how are we going to approach the diffuser? Because we have the, co the core car, but then it's like, how do we add the pieces and build up a new formula really? So looking through this now, I remember one of our biggest discussions was rear wing, that there was a lot of different rear wings, uh, rear yes. wing styles put on that car. And yeah. so we didn't like any of them, like per se, exactly as they were done. Yeah. So you came up with the design that's on your finished design, which is a bit of a, a mix of a couple different ones. Yeah, it was mostly DTM inspired because like you, I'm a massive fan of that because I think what we, when we look at DTM race cars, we go like it's full function and the brutalness of the functionality is what makes it so awesome. So and it looks like it's something that performs and is quite special that way. So um, I think with the wing, the, for me, the wing, the, the importance of the wing is to, to, to meld. It's like the bass player in a band. It's like connecting the guitar and the drums. It, it connects the rear three quarters to the rear. So it's another ratio blender, basically. So I wanted to make sure that we had something that would bond those two elements of the car so that there was like a, a proper ratio. 
for me, it's all about the ratio. Like how is one thing feeding the other thing too? So after the references, it's then kind of showing a little bit of kind of what I call the behind the scenes or this is probably the first picture I took of the project, which is a stock model of the Ford. <laughs> yeah. Wow. And look at that's this bad it. boy. That's it in all its glory. Yeah. So usually what I like to do is I'll build out a base mesh and kind of get the form right, make sure Ken's cool with it. And then we go in and rebuild that and refine everything. But these are like drawings that I would basically do over the geometry to be like, okay, this is the line, that line needs to match there and that has to have that ratio and we need to match the molding and all these kind of things. So, and they're just like quick lines, but they're reminders because when you get into 3D, you kind of lose sense of proportions and stuff. So it's really key to kind of constantly be reminded. And as you go through the process, you're constantly fighting that. So usually what I would do is I would just take references from things that I really love. So I took Ken's, uh, unicorn and like these other race cars some ferrari stuff some looks like that's like a i don't even know what that is a bm or that's a wrx or something super yeah yeah it's, a, okay. it's like a hawkeye yeah um but like just kind of drawing in like well how does the front mouth look and do we want it to smile or not and <laughs> all these different things and proportions and making sure things felt right and looked right and um these are just me taking pictures and like making notes of like the bumper line should come out this far and it's you're constantly looking at it there's so many different iterations until it actually reveals itself so even like this i was like ah this looks wonky and like trying to straighten these lines out and make sure that the proportions are right and, and this is like i i think probably one of my favorite things on this design mm -hmm. is 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 those fender um, vents because they protrude out but they also have the design language and form of the rest of the car which is really cool too so all right ash so how does this evolve into what ended up being the final design you sent me some wireframes do you want to start with those amazing yeah wireframes? well basically the look at the wireframes is so the wireframes that we're looking at now is the subdivided body so it's all the the geometry divided within itself so that you have more geometry so that it catches the light properly. So this is the final stage of the model. Um, so you can kind of see all of the little nuances and the, the details that are put into it and making sure we're matching the lines and stuff. But this is at the end of the design and modeling process. We're just kind of looking at the car um, completely done basically and modeled too. Every, everywhere you see two lines meeting, that's a vertice and that's a, that's a, a thing that you can adjust. So yeah. <laughs> and where it's black, it's like so dense, you can't even see it. So before you go to all the, the pretty stuff, though, don't you don't you look at the like clay version first, what I call the white on white? Definitely. That's part of the process is seeing it like without any livery, basically clean. So it looks like a clay model. That way we can really see what it looks like and if the lines are really working and stuff, too. If you're really critiquing a design of something seeing it in that sort of clay form with no light really bouncing off it kind of sees it in its pure form the next stage is basically rendering and rendering is where like you actually unwrap the car and then you put liveries on it and put mod um, we call them shaders and, and cgi we basically build like the principles of light when light rays bounce off the sun or wherever light's emitting it touches the surface and then car paint there's all these different layers there's your clear coat and your main paint and then if there's fleck in there and if it's matte there's all these different properties and that has an um, ior basically it's a mathematical number that's attached to the way that light reacts to it. And I love this livery. Like this is one of the liveries Ash has done. One of many sets of things that we'll look to here real quick. But this is as if we were to take um, like the current unicorn livery and put it on. Uh, you know, because we don't have time to explore all the sort of livery options right now. This is more about the car design. So it's take an existing livery, put it on. So, you know, bronze wheels, black on black livery, and all the current sponsors. So I did a couple different versions. I did a all all carbon version because who doesn't want to see an all carbon version, right? So I also just did like a crazy murdered out one because I was thinking eventually 
I just love photography too. So um, I figured, ah, well, this is how I would light that car if I was actually doing well, it. Well, that, that's the thing I love about this. So you come up with a, a mental concept that's like black on black, but dramatic black lighting. And then you send me eight images that are all insane that like most any car guy would love to have a set of photos or one photo that's like this of their car. And you just like, like there's eight like at different angles from behind with light real dramatic or just part of the car. It's just insane like that you can do this stuff so fast. So Ash, now that we're showing the whole car, let's show my my Miami Vice dream. So yeah, let's definitely talk about um, what I call road cocaine, I guess. I don't know. I was thinking about it and I was like, uh, can can we just do like an all white one if the logo is all black and white? And then I, I was expecting like, no, you can't do that, you know. <laughs> and then I, I think you were like, let's try it. Or like you said, you can never do this in real life because obviously your sponsors would not be having it. But but we're we're now in the virtual world launching a concept. So <laughs> just talk about so, this. So yeah, is is fun and yeah. great to be able to show everyone what we would love to do. But in reality, once once we hopefully build this car eventually, yeah, it'll have to have a standard, you know, logo type application on it. Yeah. Back to like, like finishing the idea of a Miami Vice Gymkhana. This is the car. This, this is what I pictured when I picture doing an 80s Gymkhana in Miami in a white on white car. This is it. Like, I, we couldn't make this any better. Like, Ash killed it. Have we just inadvertently announced the next Gymkhana? <laughs> Damn right. Yeah. <laughs> Here's like, I guess I would call this the Tony the Tiger version. I don't know why, but I mean, I guess I know why, but wow. we had talked about doing a dry carbon with the logos inlaid and then um, graphic decals and gloss on top. But um, yeah, this was a lot of fun building this out and making the carbon fit and work and stuff is cool too. Basically the, the decals um, to sh save weight, the way I would think of it, it was almost like it would be sublimated into the layer underneath the coating of the dry yep. carbon. So yeah. That's great. So, um, so in, this, in this process though, as we were going through all these liveries, I said, hey Ash, I want you to give us the liveries. What what would your dream of a car, of this car with your own graphics on it be? And so, <laughs> yeah, and, and, I, wait, I, I said, you realize <laughs> I'm going to do something pretty wild, right? Yo, I love this. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Thank you, Brian. Thank you. <laughs> Yo, I, I, I'm pretty sure that I rode this jet ski at some point in my life. <laughs> yeah, it was a good I, day. I definitely wore pants or shorts like this when I was a kid. So yeah, it's, it was like that, all that stuff's etched in my memory because growing up in the eighties and then also just knowing where this came from. And, and also the idea that the brief was like, this is a Miami kind of inspired car. So I was thinking of like super, um, like bright Pantone colors and like super bright, like pastels, but also fusing them together and adding like really weird op art stuff too. And I just love this stuff. And I appreciate you guys letting me have fun and playing with this stuff. And this is a prime example of like when I'm allowed to just go bonkers, like you get the weird stuff, you know? So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so well, thank you, that. Ash. I think thank we you. should wrap this up. Yeah. I mean, I, I got to, now I just got to figure out how to make this thing come to life in the real world. Um, but it's great to be able to see it in the virtual world in such an amazing way nowadays. Yeah, it's an extreme uh, privilege so and an honor. Honestly. All right, man. This thing is awesome, Ash. Great job on this. Thank you yeah. guys so Thank much. Thank you very much, Ash. Enjoy Appreciate working with you. Every it's time. incredible. Yeah. You guys rule. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. Yes.
time where you go and raid Ford's Instagram, their YouTube, for the next five days telling them to build the Hunafox. <laughs>